The following is a short presentation summarizing several common geophysical methods for near-surface investigations. This summary is presented by Geophysical Survey Investigations, PLLC, located in Greensboro, North Carolina. The geophysical methods discussed in this presentation include the EM31, the EM61, MASW, seismic refraction, ground penetrating radar, and resistivity surveys. The EM31 instrument has an approximate depth of investigation of 18 feet and records apparent ground conductivity as well as in-phase data which responds to the presence of buried metal. An EM31 survey is commonly used to delineate and characterize landfill cells and buried waste. The survey can also detect changes in soil conditions and lithology. This slide shows the results of an EM31 survey which was conducted to locate and characterize buried waste at a site in North Carolina. The top contour plot represents the conductivity results which delineated the per perimeter of buried waste and associated leachate. The middle contour plot shows the areas containing buried metal as defined by the EM31 in-phase data. Contours shaded in orange and red in both plots identify the areas containing the highest concentration of waste, leachate, and metal. The bottom plot is a composite map showing the limits of the landfill and the portions that contain buried metal waste based on the survey results. As the name implies, the EAM61 metal detection instrument is used to locate and delineate buried metal tanks, drums, conduits, and other metal objects within a depth interval of 0 to 8 feet. The instrument records several levels of sensitivity during each survey, which helps in differentiating between larger objects and smaller objects. This slide shows the results of an EM61 metal detection survey. The early time gate response shown in the top plot is the most sensitive component and detects all metal objects regardless of size. The early time gate is used to locate buried conduits in areas containing miscellaneous debris. The differential response shown in the bottom plot identifies areas containing large metal objects such as drums and tanks and ignores the small miscellaneous metal debris. The MASW survey converts surface seismic waves into approximate shear wave velocities. The shear wave velocities can then be used to determine the IBC site classification. A weight drop is used as a source to generate the surface waves and a spread of geophones and a seismograph record the surface wave velocities. Using a program called SurfSize, the raw seismic surface wave data is converted into shear wave velocities. The weighted average of the shear wave velocities within the depth interval of 0 to 100 feet is used to determine the IBC site classification. Another common method is seismic refraction, which determines the approximate depth to bedrock and the rippability. Best results are obtained when the top of bedrock has an abrupt contact with nominal weathering, whereas less reliable data are recorded in areas containing a saprolytic or transitional zone from soil to bedrock. GPR investigations are com commonly performed to locate and sometimes identify buried objects or changes in soil conditions. Depth of investigation is dependent upon soil or rock lithology and the frequency of the antenna being used. Best results are obtained in dry sandy soils, whereas clay soils attenuate the GPR signal and decrease the depth of investigation. GPR surveys can identify buried conduits, drums, and tanks and can evaluate or delineate boundaries of fill areas and trenches. GPR surveys can also be performed to locate metal conduits, cables or rods, and concrete walls 
or floors. Resistivity surveys can be an economical approach to evaluating bedrock conditions and to identify areas that contain large voids, incompetent rock, or abrupt changes in depth to bedrock. The resistivity results obtained along a survey line to evaluate bedrock conditions beneath a bridge pier is shown in this slide. The high resistivity values, which are the contours shaded in yellow, represent competent bedrock. The blue and green contours representing low resistivity values are probably in response to broken or highly weathered bedrock conditions. For more information regarding common geophysical methods, go to our website at www.geospacesurvey.com.